How long does it take for bones to heal after having a fracture? This is a complicated issue that's affected by our age, underlying health conditions, and our lifestyle choices. Today, we are going to talk about how long it takes for bones to heal and what to expect during that process. Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to bone health. I'm a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. And I'm also bone fit certified outside the world of yoga. I'm also a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. The topic of how long it takes for bones to heal is a serious issue and it's had profound impact on my personal life. My grandma lived with me for 10 years and during that time she had two hip fractures. When she had her second hip fracture, she was just walking down the hall of our house and she just fell. When we got her to the hospital, the doctor said that her femur had gone through her hip joint and because her bones were so soft, they couldn't operate on it to reset it. Her bones were actually soft enough and that's what caused her fall. Since there was nothing that they could do, they sent grandma home with me with the instructions that she couldn't put any weight on her leg or hip for six weeks. We got a wheelchair and a hospital bed and during that time, the doctors determined that it would take her hip joint about six weeks to heal. This was an excruciating six weeks for us. The first morning after we came home, I went into my grandma's room early, early, early to take her to the bathroom and I found her not in her bed. She knew that she needed to go to the bathroom and she didn't want to bother me and somehow she had gotten out of the hospital bed. To this day, I have no idea how she managed to get herself out of the hospital bed. She'd somehow climbed over the rails with a broken hip so as not to bother me. She was on the floor and she couldn't get up. I tried to lift her up off the floor and I couldn't lift her up. I ended up calling my teenage son whose bedroom was across the hall and he helped me lift her up off the floor. In that instance, my grandma lost it and she peed all over me. She was utterly humiliated by having an accident in front of her grandson and peeing all over me. And I felt horrible that I hadn't gotten to her in time to take her to the bathroom and that she'd resorted to trying to climb out of bed by herself. Everything about this moment was horrible. We got her into the bathroom and I bathed her because she couldn't do that for herself anymore with a broken hip. We got her situated and somehow we made it through the next six weeks with me not leaving the house at all so that I could provide round the clock care for my grandma. After the six weeks were up, she got the medical okay and a physical therapist started coming to our house. I am forever grateful for that physical therapist who came to our house during this time. Gradually, my grandma was able to move around again and to do things for herself. Her doctor declared her healed, but things were different after this fracture. There were many things that she could no longer do for herself that she'd previously been able to do. She had to use a walker from this point on, and the amount of movement that she could do was limited. It changed her life having a fracture like that. This is a significant point about the healing process from broken bones. It took about three months for the doctor to declare my grandma healed, but her life changed and was limited. There's a significant difference between being healed and being able to use our bodies in the same way that we did before a fracture. So how long does it take in general to heal from a hip fracture? In general, it takes around three months to heal from a hip fracture, but it might take much longer, like six months to a year to fully recover, and there may be permanent changes to consider as well. 
Often someone who has a hip fracture isn't able to walk for six weeks, and during this time, there's likely a significant loss of muscle mass, which will require hard work to restore once the medical okay is given to exercise as part of that healing process. It's also important to be on the watch for bed sores. If you don't know what a bed sore is, pray that you never experience one. They are awful. Bed sores are deep pressure wounds that happen as a result of not moving around. The constant pressure is an area of the body where a wound develops. They're incredibly painful and they don't heal well. Sometimes they never close again, ever. Infection in the wound is possible. And there's something that needs to be watched constantly. If you or someone that you know has ever had a broken hip, that person needs to be turned regularly and moved into different positions to avoid developing a bed sore. Bed sores are an area where, they're, where they must be avoided if it's at all possible. Another serious potential complication is developing blood clots in either your legs or in your lungs. If a blood clot develops, it could be fatal. This may necessitate taking an anti-clotting medication or possibly wearing a compression stocking. It's also essential to move our bodies. Work with a physical therapist as soon as possible to get moving again. It might feel like torture, but they are there to help you to rebuild your life after a fracture. Also, looking at blood flow post-fracture, it's possible that blood won't circulate properly to the area right around where the fracture happened. This could lead to a form of necrosis where the bone dies. This is most likely with a femoral neck fracture. While being bedridden, it's also possible to develop urinary tract infections or pneumonia. Getting up and moving around and getting our blood circulating as quickly as possible are all important for reducing the risk of having negative side effects while healing from having a hip fracture. What about other types of fractures? How long does it take to recover from a compression fracture in the spine? Healing from compression fractures usually takes somewhere between eight to 10 weeks, but it could take as long as three months to heal. Generally, compression fractures heal on their own rather than requiring surgery. Sometimes doctors will recommend wearing a brace to keep the spine from moving while it heals. Doing physical therapy once you have the medical okay, and then once physical therapy is over, continuing to exercise with a certified osteoporosis fitness instructor like me will help to strengthen your spine and to prevent refractures from happening. Surgery, such as vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty, are also used to treat compression fractures. In these surgeries, cement is inserted into the spine to create support and to lessen pain. The statistics in looking at healing from compression fractures show that exercise to strengthen the extensor muscles of the spine are the most effective. Doing exercises to strengthen the extensor muscles of the spine have been shown to delay the average refracture rate of the spine from an average of four and a half months to an average of two and a half years. For people who didn't have surgery but do regular exercise to strengthen the extensor muscles of the spine, that refracture rate is delayed a full five years. That's really significant and it makes doing exercise to strengthen the extensor muscles of the spine an important part of healing from compression fractures over the long term. Experiencing a compression fracture is different for different people but it's unfortunately a common experience for many of us. It's estimated that one fourth of the women who are past menopause will have a compression fracture in their spine. One fourth. Possible complications that arise from compression fractures include having a loss of height and a gradual descent into kyphosis or the dowager's hump. Chronic pain may also become an issue after experiencing a compression fracture. This could come from compressing of the spine on the nerves that are in the spinal cord that are affected. And it's also possible to have a compression fracture and not be aware of it at all. Sometimes 
They don't cause any significant pain. And a person will be totally unaware that they have a fracture unless they are given a bone scan or have an x-ray taken. Other compression fractures cause sudden and immediate pain and they require immediate attention. People also experience compression fractures that are anywhere between these two extremes. If you know that you have osteoporosis and you develop a sudden pain in your back that you're unsure where it came from, then it's probably a good idea to get it checked out and to see what's going on. It may be nothing, but it might also be a fracture and it's better to know that you have one than to not know because then you can be more aware of how you move your body and also help yourself in the healing process. The way that we move has a significant impact on healing from a compression fracture. If you have a mild compression fracture, it's possible to make it worse by coming into a rounded shape with the spine. This could aggravate the healing process, causing it to take longer and be more difficult. If you've had a compression fracture, maintain good posture where you spare your spine and do not come into a rounded shape. This is absolutely essential for helping yourself to heal and for making sure that you don't make the compression worse. If you want to learn more about how you can spare your spine, I offer a mini course that includes demonstrations on how you can do a variety of everyday tasks while sparing your spine. A link to learn more is in the video description. What about wrist fractures? When we fall, we tend to throw out our arms to catch ourselves. And this means that our hands and wrists are often the first thing to hit the ground. Wrist fractures are the third most common osteoporotic fracture. So how long does it take to heal from having a wrist fracture? The average healing time for a wrist fracture is somewhere between six to 12 weeks. Surgery and a cast may be necessary to set a wrist after fracturing. Wrist can be affected long after a fraction happens. It's possible to damage nearby nerves and blood vessels in a wrist fracture. And it's also possible that arthritis could develop. My husband fractured his wrist in a bicycle accident many years ago. He damaged his scaphoid and developed arthritis in his wrist. For a long time, it would swell up if he moved in an awkward angle really if he just turned it. And then one time it swelled up and it never returned to normal. Doctors determined that he had damaged the lymphatic system in that area and he has to be really careful with it. The good news is that most wrist fractures don't recover with damaging the lymphatic system. That's an unusual circumstance. So today we've covered a lot of information. Let's take a moment to review. The average time that it takes to heal from a hip fracture is three months, but it could take up to a year and a person's life could be changed in permanent ways. With hip fractures, it's important to be on the lookout for blood clots, urinary tract infections, and bed sores. The average time that it takes to heal from a compression fracture is eight to 10 weeks, but it could take as long as three months to properly recover. With compression fractures, it's essential to have excellent posture and to spare your spine to make sure that the healing happens properly and that the compression doesn't get worse. And the average time that it takes for a wrist fracture to heal is between 6 and 12 weeks. But be on the lookout for arthritis with wrist fractures. Fractures are serious business, and they can be devastating and life-changing. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year. I hope that you find this information helpful. And if it is, please share it with someone that you know and love that will also benefit from this information. Talk soon.